welcome to the Blood Brothers podcast. We are joined today, as ever, by Rob Parker and Nick McDonald. Hello. Um, and we're joined in our guest author seat by none other than James DeLaghi, a writer of 55. Correct. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I didn't know what, what, what more I had to put into that introduction other than yeah, so I left it at that. <laughs> yeah, that. That is me. I am he. <laughs> Um, we, we've been chatting for a little bit before coming on air tonight, and I think we're all going to get on quite well here. I'm going to predict that now. Oh, well, you? Huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's, there's good chemistry here. Now, can we take that to the bank, or is this... No, that's gold standard. You can... All right, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, James, what the hell of a debut. Yeah, it, it's, yeah it's certainly been quite crazy. Um, sort of the... the, it's sort of ex, the extent of the reach the book has managed um i, I couldn't have predicted it uh, at all when i when i was writing it i understood that it was a good idea um but obviously not and this is my debut book so going through the whole process um just was sort of mind-blowing in the end yeah and so many questions how where did it come from where did, did it arrive fully formed in your head or was this a with a, a little nugget in the newspaper, where did you? It essentially was a what if question. Uh, a what if two men in the middle of nowhere sort of tell exactly the same story that they that they are that they were kidnapped um, by a serial killer, um, but blame um, each other for being that serial killer. How would a detect? How would a sergeant tell who was telling the truth? It's such a good hook. I, 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 it's a hook. I mean, did you ever have a moment where you pitched it in person to someone, James? Um, funnily enough, I was back home uh, in Northern Ireland. Um, I was lit, literally t- just walking with a cousin of mine, and I pitched it to him. Who, and he reads quite, a, you know, he's quite a sort of well-versed reader. And he went, "Yeah, that that might work." That was that's the extent of that's the extent of the. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Praise that it got. Yeah, that might work. But yeah, no, I I, I understood. But I was surprised that it hadn't really, you know, it, that it hadn't been done. Whenever you whenever you think of an idea, you can't be sure that somebody hasn't sort of already sort of sort of gone through and sort of wrote, written that story before. So um, yeah, so as I say, I'm still very surprised at, um, at the success of it. I don't, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> oh dear. I mean, I, that's that kind of uh, the elevator pitch, elevator pitch for this elevator. What is one of those? Well, yeah. uh, the elevator pitch for one of these uh, for this book, sorry, is just so writes itself, you know, in that, that strength of that hook is just so I, I, I would, I want to read it all again on based on what you just said. It's that strong. Yeah. Well, l- luckily enough, it's, um, no, I'm, I'm not sure of it yourselves, but for me as an author, I'm used to everything happening inside my own head and then going onto the page rather than actually explaining it to anybody. So all credit goes to um, my agent at the time. Um, well, not my agent at the time, my agent still, um, Marilia, if it is, um, for I had pitched it to her um, over, the, you know, by emails, the, the general submission sort of, um, standard to do when you don't have an agent, and she had, she rung back within a couple of days with, uh, um, "Have you sold this? I'm very interested in this." So, and and that kind of enthusiasm is what won me over, and I think that is essential for any author because an author doesn't know how good their book is, or if it's going to sell, or um, if anybody ever wants to read it apart from their own family. Mm. Yeah. And up, up until that point as well, the only person who's going to believe in you is yourself. Yeah, exactly. And well, and obviously you have to believe in yourself, but oh, yeah. uh, you doubt that um, anything you've written will make sense, or anybody will actually sort of take the time to read four hundred plus pages of it. Yeah, was that the first it, thing you'd ever tried to write? No, um, my writing sort of. I want to say it's kind of weird to say career when you've written one book. I'm not sure you can say career as of yet, but my right, I started off 
quite late. I started off writing um, short films, so and then moved on from short films to screenplays. And after about eight years of doing that and getting precisely nowhere, I then turned to writing novels. And so, and then this novel is is not the first novel. It's about the sixth novel. Wow. So whenever people say that people are overnight successes, et cetera, oh, they probably don't understand that there's a lot of preparatory work that's gone into actually writing something that's um, sort of, that makes sense to somebody. So, um, yeah. so yeah, so it was, it was about my sixth novel. Good God. So those other five, are they in the drawer? Uh, well, I think most of them are going to stay firmly in the drawer. Um, <laughs> the, fir- the first one was a horror based on a screenplay that I'd written. Uh, I did it. I, I did it the other way around. Usually, you write a book and then make it a screenplay. I did the screenplay and then decided to make it a book. But it, it was a horror set in Newfoundland, um, in a fishing fishing village in Newfoundland. So it's still there. It has some nice points but it's again it's it's being a writer is about writing and keeping writing keeping writing until you sort of learn your craft a bit better yeah now that's interesting my um because i i came out of this uh, film screenwriting a film and tv background um and the series that i've just written the third of the other quickly series also started with the screenplay which was okay. The main character, who's now female in her fifties and a, a, a theological um, detective, started off as a, a, a drunken Catholic priest, played by um, yeah, yeah, your man, your man from where you lot are from. <laughs> With the oh, yeah, well, that, that narrows it out. Well, that could that could mean Chris or me. Uh, <laughs> and my acting um, skills are are non-existent. <laughs> Jimmy Nesbitt. Uh, no, Gabriel Byrne. Oh, oh Gabriel Byrne. Gabriel Byrne. Yeah. Oh, yeah. very nice. No, that is a legend. He is a legend, he, that guy. It's never materialised, and Gabriel Byrne turned into a, a, a rather athletic 50-year-old woman. So, happy to be here. We're all talking about in a Mrs. Doubtfire sense here, are we? No, no. It's a It's a rewrite. <laughs> Just a total right. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, wa- I watched Mrs. Doubtfire recently, right? Sorry, this is rambling, but what a sick movie. Yeah. Massively yeah. sick movie. Well, yeah, it's all, it's all about him scamming his way into his kids' lives, isn't it? Yeah. The judge was absolutely right when he said, like, you are not fit. Yeah. <laughs> like, and we were, as an audience, we were manipulated big time, weren't we? I thought it was the funniest thing ever. And then, like, now I'm like, oh my God, what a St. Pierce Brosnan is in that film. Yeah. What a massive segue. Let's move on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that, right? This is yeah, yeah, yeah. Book. Yeah, I'm yeah. so sorry, man. <laughs> yeah. This could turn into the Mrs. Doubtfire podcast quite quick, quickly. So. I, don't, I think there's a niche, there's a gap in the market. I don't think there is one. So. Huh. <laughs> oh, <wait. Come> on. <laughs> we, um, we've got quite a lot of Twitter questions, and usually um, we just get from readers, but we've got quite a lot from well known authors here. Very good. Well, oh, yeah. That could be a two, that could be a double edged sword because uh, they might ask very. Um, Detailed questions that yeah, you're I should find I'll, out here. Other, otherwise, I'll just pass it on to one of you three. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it up. Yeah, and they're all about 55, so we could destroy this. Um, <laughs> 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 um, yeah, because I read this last year when I was like sort of starting off as a book blogger, so I it was um I, I actually posted a, a review about it, um, and it's Victoria Selman has written them um, and it's sort of what I thought at the time where she says it's very visual and she can she can really picture like a film out of it um so if it were turned into a film do you have anyone in mind for any of the characters oh you know that you know that guy from we're from you know that guy, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> he, he plays a 50 year old woman in <laughs> that guy. yeah you know with that guy <laughs> I don't know what you call him either, but I'm not sure. Um, no, I this well, this did this um, 
whenever you think I thought Joel Edgerton would make a good yeah. Chandler. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um or there's um a film um Snowtown set in Adelaide um serial killer and it's Daniel Henshaw who's that's good and I thought he would also make a very good um Chandler as well. As for the other characters, I, I oddly haven't really thought about who could play anybody else um in it. But um I suppose if it came down to it, I could take one of the Hemsworth as well. There's three of them. Yeah. Sure. I mean, just take one. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, there are there are, three, there are there are three main characters. There is there is yeah. Chandler. There's Heath and Gabriel. So yeah, that's yeah. three of them. That's the whole family affair done. So yeah. you'd probably get a buy one get one free discount as well, wouldn't you? Two. No, I could. Uh, well, you can see. I don't. I don't think. I don't think anybody pitched that to them. So we could try that. Well, I've seen, um, forgive me for asking, but I've seen that um, uh, 55 has been optioned, hasn't it? Well, it was optioned. It's now right, the, right. the option passed. It was it was optioned quite quickly. Um, and, uh, yeah, there was. Uh, so, yeah, and then the, it was optioned by um, something in Hollywood, but um, it has fallen through at present, so. It's out there if you want to buy it, Rob. I just, I, I just let me whip up a quick film production company. And I'm right there, dude. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well, productions, here we come. Yeah, yeah. And, well, what about, I mean, because like the sense of, right, something I love in books is a sense of place. I, I just And the sense of place in this book is just dynamite. Yeah. Um, so where, I mean, is there a place in mind? Have you been to this place? Um <laughs> I haven't been to this specific place because the specific place is is made up, but it's a, yeah. an assimilation of a lot of different places in West Australia because uh, West Australia is one of the most magnificent places in the world. It, there's just there's a majesty about it, you know. It, it's remote and it's um, but it's also dark and you know there's a lot of characters there and because it's quite a sort of sort of open countryside so it's the town sort of based on sort of a number of different places that I've been to there because I did spend a bit of time in Australia um, and you went over the idea there was the idea that came to mind first the what if idea and then when I was thinking of where could I set this then it was West Australia came to mind and there was going to be nowhere else because nowhere else mm-hmm. has that sort of feeling of remoteness and feeling of the landscape etc because yeah. i love writing about landscape because i'm from the countryside in northern ireland myself so it's all about landscape so obviously west australia is completely opposite to northern ireland it certainly rains a lot bit more in northern ireland as chris will tell you <laughs> beautiful not so yeah. desert which part of, which part are you from i uh, from the glens glens of oh, antrim nice. Yes, so not 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 a million miles from yourself, really. Yeah. All right, very nice. You spent some time in South Africa as well, right? Sorry. You spent some time in South Africa as well. Yeah, I was I was out there for three months in South Africa as well. I was um, sort of living in sort of a rural rural village out there uh, as part of a sort of. Um, Where was that? When I was younger. Sorry. Oh, um, Where was Kazulu, Kazulu Natal. Okay, and I was quite brought up in the um, in a random Tata, so much oh. further down. Oh, okay, yes, yes. So right. we we yeah we were um, uh, up near the Drakensberg mountains. Mm. So that's like that. where my answers are going when I die. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They're not keen about the book, but they yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah you have made this quite morbid, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a geography question, you've got a geog- you've got um, uh, geography links to two members of the uh, of the ho- uh, the hosting team. It have you been to Warrington, James? No, but um, the, you, do have it. It. <laughs> you, you do have it. You do have it on the motorway, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, have you been past it on the motorway? That counts, by the way. No, I actually haven't. No, no, I've, I've <laughs> my, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the closest place to where I am, and yet that's the, the, 
the one place I haven't been. So. <laughs> I'm trying to scrabble for reasons to recommend you come here, but it's not that many. I've got to be honest. Rug, they, uh, rugby league, rugby league, to Liverpool. Yes. You're a Liverpool yeah. fan, aren't you? Yes, that yeah. I think. Yeah, I'm a Liverpool fan. That's that's kind of well. Oh, that's wow. how me and Chris sort of started chatting to each other because obviously he's a Liverpool fan from Northern Ireland oh, and he writes really crime. Cool. So awesome. Can I get in on that train as well? I'm a Liverpool fan as well. Uh, still licking my wounds today. Not happy. Yeah. But, uh, I want to win it anyway. No, but just, just, yeah. and, and, <laughs> and I know my wife told me I was a falling company last night over the community shield. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> yes. My wife would, my wife my wife's now sitting here watching me do this. No, she's oh, really? away again. Yes. No. <laughs> she she would say I'm a polling company as well, whenever I'm watching the rule, so it, it's a theme. Yeah. Um, what can, right, um obviously it's a massive um smash what's gone on with fifty five. Um I think is it eighteen, nineteen countries and counting that um this has been published in? I think we're um all right, yo, this is it's not a book I'm not there, but I think it's we had, we just sold it to Denmark, the first and the second book to Denmark. So I think we're to twenty one or something. Oh, that's amazing, man. but that, I mean, so that qualifies as like a ridiculous success in my book. So yeah, um, well, I, what, yeah, what, what? I, so you just mentioned there. Sorry, I did have a question, but you mentioned the question I'm more interested in now. The the second book. So yes. What's what's to come from you? It's another one set in West Australia. Um. Different cart. It's a. It's another. It's a standalone. Um, as yet, I've. I've. Um, I've never actually written a series. I'm. I'm very. I'm. I'm sort of very jealous of people who can write series of novels. I. I, I haven't managed that as of yet. But this one's um, set sort of bit down um, further south uh, near Kalgoorlie in West Australia, um, and it's about a family that move. Um, to an abandoned town there and um, promptly disappear. And then a detective comes in to try and discover or finds out that the family have secrets and the town has secrets so it might cause them to disappear. So, oh, amazing. Cool, yeah. Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah. Can, can, yes. can I say four really loudly? Or is that uncouth these days? You can say it. You're in, the, you're in the pub. You can say it. Someone might think you're saying four and four down. Four but... Right, you got me. I'm going to fix right here. So that, is that March? It's like, did you say it got pushed back a bit? I think it's April now. I think like like everything, it just it's things just keep getting sort of pushed back and back. Because I think it was meant to be out probably September originally. It's September, so it's been pushed back, obviously, like many things are these days. Is this a huge, there's like a Super, super Tuesday or something coming up in September where there's like yeah. thousands of books coming out on one day? Yeah, and I, it, it's going to be very hard not to get lost if you're not one of the big name people. Yeah, yeah. ridiculous. Um, Could be a and then that you just got pushed back a bit then. It is, but it's also a case of whenever you whenever you've got one done and there's a second one sort of there, you're you sort of want to push it out there to see what people think. Obviously, yeah. that can, that can be a bad thing sometimes because people might tell you exactly what they think. But <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah, well, no, no, yeah, well, yeah. Some some of the emails I got from the first book. Um, oh, really? My, oh yeah, yeah. Because well, you you've obviously read it, so you know about the ending. Yeah. So the ending, the ending can be a bit marmite for people. Thank you so much. Yeah. You, know, you get, you know, you get people who go, you know, love that ending. I get what you're trying to do with it, and then you get people who go, uh, "I got the book, and the uh, the last page seems to be missing." So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, literally, and that's not even a joke. People have actually sent me emails saying, "Oh, I think uh, can you let me know what happened at the end because the last page seems to be missing." <laughs> Well, like they do on the official police documents, you should have got the publisher to put this page left deliberate blank. Oh yeah, oh. that's a that's a great idea. You can have that. That's oh, cheers! Free. Cheers! <laughs> and, <laughs> now we have to. What do? You, can you retro publish something? <laughs> so Including that <laughs> explanation right. for these people. I, yeah, I just, I tell people that the only person who knows. Well, I, it's I, it's not the ending. Of the book is kind of you know it's um. It's your own sort of personal take on 
what do you think yeah. happened? So it's it's um, I've taken you know, uh, and but obviously some people don't like that. People some people like um, to be closed off completely. But then life really isn't. No, yeah. life isn't like that. Mm-hmm. It, you know, was was it always going to end that way? Like, did you have that in mind from the start, or did that did that come around like while you were writing? That really happened right at the end when I was writing the last chapter. I was writing it, and I was you know. Uh, obviously, you've been through the whole process of the story, and you've been through what the people, what the characters actually have gone through. And then it came to the last, and I thought, well, no, this is the way it should end. The um, sort of, mm. well, the non Hollywood ending. And I was surprised when, because it's my debut, that the I wasn't sort of asked politely to to change the ending to something more. That's sort of exactly traditional. what. I'm- I was going to ask you about was was there was there any pushback at all from either editors or publisher or agent to go? People are going to be angry. <laughs> no, absolutely none. Maybe no, no, none at all. And I that's I, I obviously being a debut, you might have been influenced to change it. Had people sort of come in and said, you know, I think this is you know it's very good, but I think you should adapt the ending in some sort of way, but. No, no, luckily enough, and so that's the way it is, and Brilliant. it's out there now. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I like that. Um, I like how um, I love books in general where the audience aren't taken for dummies, and there's a trust. Um, you know, the 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 writer trusts the audience, um, with their material to put, <laughs> put you know, um, connect the dots, connect the dots in their own way. You know, I, I I love that. Yeah. But it's a very tough thing to do. It's a very mm. tough oh, thing. Yeah. Whether, as a writer, you it's hard not to fall into the whole explain everything just in case they don't pick up on X, Y, and Z points that are nece- necessary for the novel. But as you say, you have to you have to trust that the reader knows what they're doing. You know, they've mm. they've read pens, hundreds of sort of crime novels before, so they they know how yeah. to connect the dots. And the crime yeah. readers do. The crime re- yeah. crime readership is voracious, isn't it? You know, uh, I think when um, when we talked to Anne Cleves a couple of weeks ago, she said she said a really beautiful thing, which is that when, once it's done and once it's out there, it's the reader's book. It's not her book anymore, and and they have put as much into into it, as much creativity into it as she does as, as, in writing it. And she she sort of has that feeling that you know you go you bring to it what you will as a reader but it's not my responsibility if you know and i think that's a really lovely way of looking at it because you well this is, i've had readers come back to me and say they found things and then this is really clever that you see did this throughout and you're like yeah yeah it was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 post-it note on the board <laughs> yes <laughs> i i had i had exactly the same whenever it went um Obviously, they went to sell the option to the, the, the production company, so the production company goes and reads it, and then they come back within a couple of days with this sort of two pages of notes. And half of the notes, I, they'd, they'd read things into certain parts of the novel that made absolute sense, and I was going, that's amazing. I have never, didn't consider any of these. I go, I'll, I'll, t- I'll take those, thank you very much. Yeah, but it's... But as you say, it's just, people read people read th- different things into novels, yeah. and obviously that it's it's all on the page. So they're visualising it as they go yeah, along. Yeah. So. Can we call that like accidentally on purpose, literally, literally, literally? <laughs> 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 no, it's something like that. It, it's um, but just, there's part of me that thinks like, oh wow, yeah, that is there. But is there a reason that's there? Like, because your subconscious works in such mad ways that. I mean, I think I think there's merit in all sorts of things. You know, like um, not writing for a bit. You know, like and you, if you're stuck and just like I do something really stupid and banal and just look out the window or whatever, and and the dots seem to feel like they connect to me, and you come up with better stuff afterwards. You know, just because you've done something that you, you that has occupied your mind in a really, really, so I suppose sim- simplistic way, um, while your brain is doing the sort of the factory work in the background. Um, do you what do you what well that leads on? What do you do with your downtime? You know, when you're writing a book, James, do you are you like do you have a regime or do you just what, what do you well? Know? 
Well, what I do is I have a day job, so that's my that's my mundane routine, sort of. So whatever I do, that, uh, things can pop up while I'm while I'm just doing that, and I'll, I'll think, oh right, better write that down. That's an idea for a book, or it's an idea to solve a plot point in the current book that I'm writing. So I have the day job, and then I start. Um, my usual writing is between ten at night and two in the morning, type of thing. Yeah. Because I find that's my that's where I'm most productive. I've been to, I've been to festivals where I've listened to writers say no early morning they wake up six o'clock to ten o'clock etc and they get most of their work done. I'm the opposite. I have to have nothing going on. Nobody's going to be contacting me etc. And mm. sit down and do it that way. Yeah. And so are you are you full time out of the house day jobbing? And then come back, do tea, and then. Well, well, look, I mean, luckily, yeah, luckily enough, it's. it's uh, at, yeah, luckily enough, at the minute, um, it's full time in the house day jobbing because nobody can go anywhere, um, because yeah. I'm I'm an office based worker, so my office is now, at home. Um, not not this office. This is my wife's office. I've got the office downstairs, which is the living room. So, <laughs> so that's that, that's where I'm based. But um, yeah, so I have a full time job, and then I I write at night, and that's because writing such a it's you know you you need to sort of have a few books and make sure that you're comfortable in what you're doing, or I personally do. So I I like to have a sort of steady backup, sort of sort of um, that that I'm that I'm not going to be sort of. Um, Without you know any money at all, because writing's obviously such a up and down business. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. I mean, you guys were talking last week to S.J. Watson, and you know, you know, the monumental success of the first book, and then we had a second book as well. Yeah, mm. you never know. You know what that roller coaster is going to say. No, then, sure. you know, and Cleves were saying it was it was nearly twenty years before any kind of success. Yeah. And now you go. She's the author of all the beers and all of the shit. And all of the shit. Yeah, it's about it's about making hay while the sun shines. I think as well. You know, if you're on the crest of a wave, stick on that wave and go as long, you know, long and hard as you can at it, possibly. Um, but yeah, I mean, but having said that, not everyone comes out with fifty five as their first book. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know? but, but it's but it's 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 all about ideas. You know, yeah, it is. Yeah. Everything's about you know. If you have a strong idea, strong character, you've you've got a chance. Like in that, you know, because something you know, if it, it, it resonates with somebody. Um, mm. Actually, I was listening to that please um, podcast where she said, you know, it was ten years or was it ten years or twenty years. Yeah, yeah. It was a long time. Yeah, Certainly until in writing. Uh, yeah, until sort of it caught on, and then once it catches on, then everybody flocks to it and that's, you know, becomes sort of yeah. a phenomenon yeah. like that. So You take her, some of her most successful, uh, in terms of commercially successful series, and the first several of those weren't well read or well received. Hmm. You know, it's, it's, something happened later and an award was won and then the back catalogue is, is adopted by a TV production company. But, you know, uh, you just never know when you're, you know, you could be Steve Larson. Mm. Well, yeah, that that's quite true. Yeah, but uh, what the hell? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was going to. I wasn't. I wasn't going to say that. But you're yeah, going morbid once again. But yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's <what> <laughs> At this point, I've designed. A, well, I say I've designed a game. I've I've stumbled upon a game. Uh, if you'd like to play, go for it. Um, Is it so? I've I've stumbled upon this um, Twitter page called Amazon Movie Reviews, and it's funny Amazon reviews. Have you seen it, Rob? Yes. Well, go <laughs> and if if you know it, then we'll pass it over to one of them. Bear yes, in mind, he probably he was probably drunk when he did it, so maybe. He's <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to read you the the review, good or bad, and you have to guess which movie it is. Okay, and we'll start, we'll, we'll take it in turns, so we'll go with Sean first. One star, Sean. 
There were no wolves in this movie. Dances with wolves? No. Oh, there were wolves in that movie. <laughs> I'll pass that across to James. Uh, Little Miss Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> It's correct. There were no wolves in it, but it's not the right ah. one. Uh, good guess. So close. So close. Rob? Um, I, no, I'm going to have to pass back to you. You know it. Um, it was The Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> uh, James, your turn. Two stars. Not the kids' movie with clay sheep. Absolutely horrified. I thought it was a claymation movie with lambs. I got it confused with Sean the Sheep. My three-year-old hasn't said anything since watching this. I'm going to take a solid guess at Silence of the Lambs. It is. Well done, James. Silence isn't a good like title word. No. <laughs> really not. Um, so, okay, James, I'm going to get confused with Sean the Sheep. <laughs> uh, Rob, we'll play in and then see if it's a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I, I um, because I, d- listeners, I am au fait with this Twitter account, and I listen, I look at it all the time. So, yeah, um, if it's one I've heard, I won't, I won't say a word. One star. This could never happen. Oh yeah, a boat this big could really sink. I actually, I haven't seen this one. Um, my original thought was Jaws. Um, That's always your original oh. thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, isn't it? It is, isn't it, Sean? Um, but I will, go, I will say, surely it's Titanic. It is Titanic. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought that was going to be a bit too obvious. I thought he was going to pull the rug from under you there, but okay. Oh, yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, serious. Sean, I can't believe it. Don't think. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to Sean. Um, one star. At this point, we must assume he either loves captivity or he's an attention-seeking whore. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the review? Yeah. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he loves captivity, or he's the. A... Sorry, there's families in this pub, so I'm not going to say. <laughs> It's not Silence of the Lambs again. <laughs> it could fit. Uh, <laughs> Although I, th- I think I think Hannibal would have a big problem with being called that. <laughs> um, I don't know. He loves captivity, or Silence of the Lambs. No, I'm going to end it there. I was going to say Castaway, but it's not Castaway because he's not in captivity. That was Free Willy <laughs> 4 Escape from Pirate's Cove. <laughs> <laughs> was it not a different rail each time? <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> Sorry, did, he, did he just call a whale one of those, you know, that word I can't say? Yeah. Yeah. That's a disgrace. <laughs> James, over to you. One star. It's hard to believe that a hotel that size in Colorado would close in the winter with all that skiing business. Oh, this is a classic. How come they get the easy one? Yeah, <laughs> no, it's going to get lands on fairly on you. This is easy. I'm not even going to say it. It's too easy. <laughs> no, it's a shame. A shame. Before Rob jumped in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was the shining. Well done. The oh, classic. One star traumatized me. Switching from a system of exploiting children's screams to exploiting children's laughter does not make you the good guys. You're still exploiting child labor. Ethical capitalism doesn't exist. Right. I truly never have heard this one. Um, never have heard this one before. Um, because the um, it's a Disney thing, isn't it? And there's a Hoover involved. I know what it like is. An audible... I don't even understand the review. Never mind anything else. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's making a comparison between what I think is Monsters Inc. 
with some child labour camp somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? Yeah, it is Monsters, Inc. Well done. <laughs> now they switch from screaming to laughter. Um, Sean, back to you. Good luck. Uh, one star. Yes, they are criminals, but nobody deserves to be hit in the head over and over again with a brick. Oh, is this Home Alone? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> If they do deserve to be hit in the head over and over with a brick. Yeah. <laughs> Don't traumatise a child. Did you, um, see, did you see that Macaulay Culkin's 40? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> we'll I never knew that. that. He's only six years younger than me. I didn't realise that. I thought he was like four. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think he'd like to be on what you're on, Sean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am on. Yeah. You, you, don't mean, you, you don't mean this podcast. Is he the next, is he the, is he the next guest? <laughs> Not until he writes a best selling novel. Exactly. Until he's in 19 countries, Macaulay can jog ah. <laughs> oh, on. 21, 21, I apologise. James, back to you. This is a pretty tricky one. One star. Harry Potter is terrible in this movie. He doesn't do no magic, and they don't even mention if his son will go to Hogwarts. Oh, this is going to be something else that Daniel Radcliffe's done, and that's going to be trouble for me because I can't name... Is it the one where he's a zombie? There's one where he's a zombie! Can't remember. There's one where he's dead on an island, yeah. He's like a corpse, isn't he? Yeah, I think that's the one. It's, it's, man. it's not that one. Nah. Is no, I, want I, to jump in? Yeah, I'll pass is it over. It, is it the woman in black? It is. Oh, Show nice. back level oh. two all there. Well done. I love that. He don't do no magic. Um, do magic. There was a show there, though, that moved on its own, which technically could be magic. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, one star. There was almost no blood in this whole movie. Oh, I know this one. <laughs> That's a great review. <laughs> well, so they get it one star. Yeah. <laughs> there was almost no blood in the whole movie. I don't know. <laughs> James, you, you're going to press. James, go for I know it. I, I'm going to guess it's there will be blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's blood in the <laughs> I've not seen it. Is there no blood in that film? There's very uh, little, apparently. There's a oh, lot of oil. There's a lot of oil in it. <laughs> right, there's one, there's one blood review blood. left. Is it blood simple? Is it blood diamond? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going into the last round, you've got one review left each. GM's you're in the lead. 3-2 to everyone else. So, Sean, last one for you. One star. The title is very misleading for US country folks. My daughter conned me into watching it. Only a few seconds she said it was a show about drag racing. I thought she meant more along the lines of cars going fast. And it's a movie. No, this one's a TV show. Is it RuPaul's Drag Race? It is. Well yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Three. And James... Uh, you've got two reviews here. Five stars. Jar Jar. One <laughs> star. Jar Jar. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now, I don't know if you did this on purpose, but I don't really know Star Wars films at all. So, it's enough. It's enough. So, uh, it's Star Wars. Whoa, one. No, not. It is episode Star one. Yes, well done. Like oh, the, the, the rogue the menace, I know the Phantom Jedi. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> and the then, rogue menace is a such a better title than so many of the titles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this last review, I think, is my favorite. It got two stars, and Rob will do it to see if you can tie up for Sean in second place. Two stars. So, spoiler alert. The sun is going out, and the people on the spaceship are going to restart it and save the Earth. They have a lot of challenges to overcome, like in any movie, and then they overcome them. But here's the thing about the movie that you won't believe. 
No one ever looks really serious and says, it's daylight saving time. <laughs> Not one character. No one says, it's daylight saving time in the entire film. I th- I know you don't think it's possible, but if you watch it, you'll feel like you wasted four hours of your life with time moves slower when you're waiting for someone to deliver an amazing line. What were the writers thinking? Well, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> My initial thought is Danny Boyle's sunshine. It is that. It is. Is that? Uh... Did he say it was four, four hours? Uh, in? No, he says it felt like four hours because he oh, was waiting like for that amazing hours. line yeah, to be in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, because he really wanted that line to be in it. Yeah. Sorry, I needed the joke yeah. explain to it. I was so sorry. So they didn't say it's daylight yeah. saving time and it annoyed him. So, James, you're our winner. Four to three. Oh, well done. Oh. It's, always, it's always, like, nice when the guest wins. Yeah. Love it. Love well, it. I think I got oh. the easy ones. I got the easier ones, definitely. So <laughs> Doesn't oh, diminish the win. No. a bad joke. <laughs> That's not what's won the rogue menace after the match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, extremely cool. Um, going back to serious points, um, Heather Critchlow, you're afraid of the light, I think. Is that right? Was she one of the authors? Yes, she is indeed. She wants to know are you a plotter or a pantser? I, I am definitely a plotter. I did. I, 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 I literally. It's, I'll plot the whole thing out in sort of a rough outline form, then a more detailed outline form, then change the outline until I'm sure I've got maybe an outline that's well for the latest one that I'm doing. I had an outline of twenty thousand words. Cool. So, and then I sort of it's like filling in the meat and that sort of skeleton. But I'm trying to move slightly more away for it from it. But the, the problem I find is I'll just sort of start doing something spontaneously, get to a point that I'll break and then go, oh, I wonder what happens next, and then plot it out. So mm-hmm. ruin all the work I was doing. So. Yeah, when you're in the shower, your brain just carries on doing the plotting anyway, and you're like, oh, well, I may as well bloody write it down then. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Up on myself every now and then, and then you sort of go and do something else. You do the gardening, or you, you have a shower, and it's like, blah, 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 blah. that's what's going to happen next. Week. Oh. Yeah. Or sometimes, you, or sometimes you just get ahead of yourself, and you're you're writing sort of a bit, but your brain is thinking about the plot on ahead, so you sort of get annoyed because I'm just going to, I'm going to, if I don't write the plot down now, I'm going to forget the plot. So you abandon it, and then you start plotting. So, but. It's yeah. each, each to their own. Some people do. Some people don't. So. I like it. My brain feels a bit more... I, I don't always stick to the plot that I originally yeah. plotted, but... No, yeah. definitely not. No, no. It can, it can change as you, as you write it. It will change. You'll find that some pieces don't fit together unless you change the plot in some certain way, so... But, have, you ever been, have you ever been trained in writing at all, James? Like, was it just something you wanted to do, or what's like? Was writing always something like when you were a kid you wanted to be a novelist one day, or? Um... I just wanted to pass English. That was my main um, focus at the start, and because um, I could not stand English when I was in school, I really, I just didn't get it. So I, I scraped a GCSE in English, and I was more than pleased with that. And then I didn't go back to writing for years after that. And then, then, then I just then I happened to fall into writing short films, just sort of as a hobby, and that's that's how it developed from there. As I explained earlier, so was... I'd love to see the interview, the the alumnus interview with you and your old GCSE English teacher. Yes. It, it doesn't always work well. Um, my A level English teacher, I I think the world of. He's like one of my um, one of the pe- one of the main reasons I l- love books. And um, he, I kept trying to get him to take me on and read one of mine, but he just won't do it. No, <laughs> I invited him to the launch of my debut. We invited him to the launch of the second book. He didn't come to either. 
What did you do? What did you do? I don't know what I did. I think I think I think there's a I think there's a deeper story there. Ends up writing novels. You've kind of smashed it out of the park as an English teacher, um, and he and then that that novelist then credits you as being one of the main reasons why you love books. <laughs> and then you don't want to go to you don't want to like I sent him um I sent him a copy of my second book. Um, and um, he, there was no response until um, I was sent a review by somebody else at the school in the school paper um, <laughs> who said, I better give this back to da 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 from English department because it's, the book is dedicated to him. <laughs> Honestly, what, can, what more can a man do? You know those one star reviews that you, you get for your books that you print on your mugs? There's oh, yeah. not, that's not one from him, is there? I don't know. I've no idea. Don't know. This is a sticking point, lads. It really is. I've seen a video of someone um, burning your second book. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. A Mister something from. A Mister McDonald's. <laughs> he is definitely still alive. You, you, you know. Yeah. My, my English teacher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just hate but it, it's yeah, it's not like Sean to bring it back to death though once again. I was invited back to the school to do a talk to the school yeah. and I went back in. And um it was it, it, you know, I said like is he is he here? And they said like uh, no it's his day off, he's not here today. Right? Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 what have I done? <laughs> That's amazing. Did you accidentally touch him inappropriately? No, I didn't. I didn't. I, I, I didn't. not there, but it might be something else. But more if you're listening, you know who you are. Please reach out. Hi, There's quite I, a bit of desperation in my voice there. Apologize. Yeah, I mean, you can get some bad reviews, but that has to be the worst review I've ever heard, that he's just shunning you completely. When your own English teacher won't yeah. even yeah. to you. Own, not only your own English teacher, your own inspiration yeah. is just shunning you completely. Takes a day of unpaid uh, leave so he doesn't have to yeah. see you. <laughs> Oh, no. I know, I know. It's that bad. It really is that bad. Oh, yeah, that would be like me just saying like some like Stephen King or something like that, and sort of walk up, and then as soon as he hears your name, he just sort of walks back out of the room. <laughs> Speaking of bad reviews, do you um how do you, I mean I haven't looked or anything, but do you deal well with bad reviews or? That, don't you lie, Chris? I, you've been reading bad reviews of stuff all night, so got them here. Got them here. <laughs> <laughs> here they are. Here's here's the list of your worst reviews. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're, you're like a new, you're a top forty DJ. <laughs> Number one. Uh, yeah, I used to. It's it's especially when you're a debut author, you kind of look at reviews because you can't go. Oh, I wonder, you know. Is somebody going to say something good or bad? But then after a while, you realise that even if you get 10 good reviews and one bad review, you're just going to focus on the bad review and that's just going to annoy you because you think, all oh, right, OK, maybe I should have changed this or changed that. But no, that, you know, so I don't really look at them. But I have got some great, so the, but the second ever email I got, um, some uh, from just a guy. He must. He lives in Western Australia, and he sort of I mentioned sort of the forest around where sort of the town is, and he went, "Well, you know, there's there's no forest here. If you go three thousand miles south, you get you'll find a forest. Um, so why don't you get off your fat lazy arse and get out here and do some research?" <laughs> <laughs> and that was my second of a review or second of a email to do with it, but. I, I know where he's coming from. But I just describe it as a forest because it's easier to to name it rather because you can't see it. Obviously, you have to visit, so it's easier to visualise it if you say forest. But yeah, that was it. Get off your fat lazy arse and get out here and do some research. <laughs> Just what you want to hear when you debut drop. Oh yeah, exactly. What you want to hear. <laughs> positivity, all that positivity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is creating the entire universe. Why don't you come out? And <laughs> oh my god! I know. Yeah. 
Oh, dear. Because, uh, Chris, I know where this is going, actually. Yeah, go for it. Go it's for it. It's a nice it, little link, isn't it? So it is, yeah. <clears throat> what we do, James, is we play a game called One Star Superstar every week where I find a book that's got a one-star review and I read the review and you have to guess what it is. Go for it. Right. One what, what star. Rook, the Rook Menace. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God, yes. God. Damn it. There we go, searching for another one. Um one star, overrated, much better books out there. I read this on a recommendation, but was very disappointed with the story and the style of writing. I find this theme similar to Hunger Games and a thousand splendid suns, in that the central characters find their world changed overnight due to a regime change. However, the other books were well written and had me gripped from the start, and I really cared what happened to the stories, or to the characters. I only finished reading this as I thought it would get much better, and it was a short read. If I hadn't been on the beach, brackets, no Wi-Fi, I'd have just downloaded something else. Oh, dear. No, that, that awful brackets, no Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, so there's obviously a series of books. Uh, really, I... I'm going to go the girl with a dragon tattoo. No. If I'm honest, I've, I've got this wrong because I downloaded... My phone broke today and <laughs> the one that I had got for this is on there. And I thought I'd got the right one on the iPad, but obviously I have not. So that one doesn't give too much. So, right. Sean, can you I, just access a little bit? And, we... yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I thought this was a professional yeah. organisation, but... <laughs> <laughs> We've all got, you know, one's got a busted phone, one's in the pub. Yeah, Sean's been attacked by a dog over there, so yeah, we're okay. We're all, we're all at least physically safe. <laughs> so that's one of them. That is one star view that doesn't I, I tell you I've very got much. An, I've got an, an offering here. I think. Ooh. Do you want to hear the shorter second one star? No, I want to try and go for go. absolute gold with the. Go on. Is it is it um from one of the Hunger Games books? No. Oh balls! No, Never mind. It was, it was reminiscent of the Hunger Games. That's not going to be. No. You should have compare it. <laughs> I'll give you the other one, and, and there's a bit more detail in this one, and it's short. It says, um, "I'm on chapter twelve, and all that's happened is that she's gone to the shops." Seen some dead bodies, had a bath, and been to the doctors. <laughs> is that Eleanor completely fine? No, that could be. It oh. could be probably. Yeah, I, I haven't read it, but and I thought you said oh, Eleanor Roosevelt is completely fine, and I was going, <laughs> "What is that? Eleanor Roosevelt is completely fine." <laughs> She's, she's, she's probably dead, Sean. <laughs> again, again. again. <laughs> I don't know what the That was the bug. Yeah, yeah. So, um... <laughs> Is that correct? No. Oh, that's no. not correct, right? Okay. It's a dystopian, massive <laughs> book. Uh, it must be the um, Handmaid's Tale. It is well done. Sorry. Oh, oh well done. yes, the guest wins again. Yeah, it. Sorry, that I, the other one I had was better, and it, it, I thought I'd got it on here, but I've, I've done the wrong one. So hey ho, he got it, so it works. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to be able to edit that into anything useful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you got the purge of editing this, Sean? Yeah, fucking every week. <laughs> <laughs> Getting slacker each week, I have to say. Do you have to listen to those two every week and edit them? Mm. Oh, good. Go, yeah, yeah, let's do this from the pub where there's loads of ambient noise. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask this question, Sean. Is it not, is this going to cause a problem? You're always causing problems. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. This is my intentions being so good. Um, no, so, right, we've had the one starry bit. So, um, I, I, James, have you ever had um, a review of 55 or, or a comment about 55 from someone that absolutely blew your mind? 
Uh, well, well, to be fair, getting into this game, I knew obviously no authors and, and nobody. So getting any review from any, you know, that they actually enjoyed the book. And that I know that's kind of the sort of stuck answer that you're happy with any good review, but you literally are happy with any good review yeah, because course, you yeah. put so much time and effort into writing it and editing it and everybody, not even yourself, it's everybody behind the scenes, your agents, mm. doing it and your editors and publicists, etc. all putting so much work in. So it's all kind of um, for sort of yourself and for them as well. But um, but uh, yeah, it's like, it's like anything. It's, it's hard to, whenever it's, I'm very, whenever you're put in the spot to think of these things, as I said, I'm an author, I put things on the page and so I can edit them and edit the answer and edit it. Whenever I'm asked directly out, I, my mind just goes completely blank, which makes me a great <laughs> But Because my, <laughs> myself and Chris were meant to, be, meant to be on a panel a few months ago at, uh, at Crime Fest, actually. Um, yeah. And then, obviously, uh, festivals don't happen at the minute um, for obvious reasons, so... Um, but yeah, this so, has so an, this has been the next best thing. So, in answer to your question, Rob, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, absolutely fair enough. I think one of the best things that I've, I've decided that one of the best things that I, that I like to hear now is not what they thought about it, but more that I've read it, you know, because that mm. person has devoted like maybe anywhere between five to ten hours of their time to read your book. And that's like a serious investment, isn't it? Really, you know, when you think that you could listen to a song for three and a half, four minutes, or six, if we're talking about meatloaf. Um, mm. So yeah, it's a massive. I can't believe that I said that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or are you? Or George or, shaking his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear even the dog growled in there? <laughs> Uh, An easier but, question than James. What are you reading at the minute? What are you reading? I'm reading Shed No Tears by Kaz Breer. Nice. So, and it's, yeah, it's fantastic. It's, um, whenever you read something like police procedural, procedural novels and you just go, yeah, these, this person must have done a mountain of research for this because there's just the detail and the interplay between sort of the police officers as well as sort of the suspects and their private lives. It's very well done. I'm very jealous of people who can do that because it, um, it's just building that entire world. Is, um, it's a very difficult thing to do, or at least I find it a very difficult thing to do. Um, mm. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's that impossible or that feels impossible when you set out to, to, to write again, you know, right, everything's got to come out of my brain. Mm. All yeah. of the whole moment, all of the characters, everything's got to, it's just hard. Yeah. Yeah. And as, as I say, I've, I've, I have an idea for a series set in New South Wales um, involving sort of two or three books of the same detective, but it's not something I've actually gone through and written as of yet. Um, even the previous five novels we talked about, they're all standalone as well, so um, it's just about finding that, You obviously for a series you need to have at, at least one character, at least your main character has to be somebody that people want to follow mm -hmm. throughout their lives. Um, and the trick, the trick with that is just getting, uh, slowing down their arc so that it doesn't go over one story, their arc has to, they have, to have yeah. loose arcs that and it's really tough because there's a point at which you kind of go, oh, God, I can't keep throwing more shit at this person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'd be a logical fuck up by now if this was real. Yeah, so. and, and also because you're sort of delaying gratification for the reader as well because this person's going through their arc so much slower than everybody else. So it's just sort of building. And you obviously have to build something quite, quite you know, monumental for that person, you know, for your main character. Yeah. As well as then, obviously, fit in the crime and other other subplots as well. Yeah. What are you oh. reading, Chris? Um, I've I finished Neil Lancaster's book going back at the start of the week, and it was really, really good. And since then, I'm sort of like deciding what to write next, and I've not really settled on anything. So this week, I've watched an awful lot of Peep Show. Oh, good yeah. choice. Yeah. For like the 20 millionth time through it. I think it could be my mastermind thing, but um, 
I had just not been able to settle on anything this week, really. <laughs> uh, what about you, Rob? Well, um, I've been reading friend of the podcast, uh, Neil Broadfoot's new book, The Point of No Return, which is his next Connor Fraser. Um, yeah, lovely. And it's out. Uh, this week, let me just have a look. September the 3rd. September the 3rd is Thursday, is that right? Possibly. Please say yeah. it's Thursday. Is that, is that the big date? Is that when a lot of books I are coming out? I think it's the big date. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Maybe the big date. So, um, on which case, this is this could be the day that this podcast comes out. So, massive happy publication day uh, to Neil. If anyone's listening to this, um, this is just everything you love about um, whip smart, whip cracking crime books. Um, you've got a, a hero here who um, is absolute nails, but there's massive depth to him. Um, I think it's really, really good, um, and I think. Um, you know, this will rise above, like the cream always does. It will rise above on September 3rd. Um, so, yeah, go out there and buy it. Lovely. And Sean? I, do, I finished the curtains, um, the proof of the devil in the dark water. Oh, how was oh, that? Very good. Oh, oh, it's amazing. I really love I love uh, The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle anyway. But, yeah, I've, I've loved reading it. And it's taken it's taken me ages, not because of anything else, but just because, you know, I've been caring for my father and moving house and moving business, and he's just like you know, they're like ah, oh, I've still got the book. Yeah, it's in the box. Of this box. <laughs> so um, it, it's incredible. He's he's a talent. Yeah, incredible, awesome. Yeah, because it's, it's very it's very difficult to to get a set of, you know to set aside time to do that because you've obviously got so many things to do in the day. It's as well. Yeah. Never never mind. Um, Writing, setting aside time to actually write as well. So, yeah, so, uh, you're writing. I'm, I'm running a publishing company to get yeah. a, a, you know hundreds of submissions that you also have to read, and and then you said reading for pleasure. You're like, oh, you're reading again. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, I loved it. I really, it, and it takes a special. I think I'm sort of getting to a point where my reading for pleasure now is with authors that I really know and trust you know mm. and you just, you know, be fine shoot i'm on my own I love and there's that. something wonderful wonderful about that too you know when you yeah. um when you have that time with an author that you just adore mm. that's so special i just love yeah. that and that and that's a, that's a dream for an author as well to have readers who go yeah. who want i want to read something that i know is going to be good so i choose you and then yeah. Yeah. Reading their yeah. that that is yeah. that is that's what we all dream of Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, lovely way to end it. On I that note, <laughs> I know. Warm well, and huggy, thanks. I feel. Yes. Yeah. James, lovely. can we have a beer with you when we're uh, when we're out in the real world at some point? Yeah, who knows when that'll be? That could be twenty twenty two. Can we uh, put you in for? Should we just we'll play safe? Autumn twenty twenty two. Autumn twenty twenty two. Any any time in autumn twenty twenty two. <laughs> yeah, we'll go to Warrington. Yes, yes we'll do a we'll, night out in Warrington. We'll all meet up in Warrington. <laughs> Hi, with that, that's so good. <laughs> and then I'll phone you halfway through, going, "I can't find Warrington." <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, no problem. Thank thanks for thanks for having me. It's it's been um, been a pleasure. It's been fun. It's been, um, right. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. 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 goodbye.